My name is Ernie Walker. I am a board member, a founder of Wanuskewin Heritage Park and uh, I've been here for over 40 years now as the archaeologist and uh, have of course a personal attachment to bison um, uh, because of my research and uh, was interested in building a park and here we are. We built our own park. The animals that we got in the United States last December were four bred cows, so these were cows that were pregnant, and a bull. So we knew we were going to have calves. Normally bison calve in late April, early May, in a fairly tight time period. This is a lot different than domestic cattle, and sure enough, that's exactly when they, when they came. There was a lot of interest in these animals because even though it's so historically important over 6,000 years, there hasn't been bison on this property for probably 150 years. So these calves were the first calves born at Wanuskewin in that really remarkable length of time. My name's Darlene Brander. I'm the CEO of Wanuskewin Heritage Park. I manage the day-to-day -day operations of this park. So last summer, when I came on board at, uh, with Wanuskewin, we didn't have a bison manager at that time. And we needed a bison manager in order to bring in the bison. We got really lucky with our bison manager in that he is such an expert within the um, bison community. He brings considerable knowledge through his connections, which is one of the reasons that we hired him. He was able to bring in um, the bison from the United States, and that was worldwide news. My name is Craig Toms. I am the bison manager here at Wanuskewin Heritage Park. On an average day, I will uh, go out and check on the grass, um, see how, you know, how the grazing's going. I will take out oats to each group of, of bison we have here, as well as check for any animals in distress, sickness, uh, make sure everything is, is healthy and, and doing good for the day, and manage the grass, and look after doing all of our genetic research and stuff that we are doing here with these bison at the park. Craig, you've been saying that those yearlings have been eating oats now? Yeah, we've been, they've just started now, um, kind of getting onto the oats. We talked about you wanted them to eat oats because this is the time of year that they're usually shedding their coats. Yes. And that would be, um, having that extra nutrition would help. But I noticed even today that, well, it's a lot better than it was, but there's still some that are fairly shady. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll help for them to shed. We were really thrilled as a staff um, in the midst of this pandemic, in, in the midst of working from home, that um, when the bison came, they came on these really special and significant days. Our first bison baby was born on Earth Day. And um, we didn't know kind of what um, a special message or ray of hope it was for the public until we did our news release. So we did a little video and we just put it out there and we didn't expect the amount of views that we got from it. It really, it really took off. It was one of our uh, highest rated videos. But what it told us is that this baby bison really in the midst of this pandemic that we're in, gave a lot of people hope. And then we had the next on Red Dress Day, and then uh, a bison born on April 28th. And these were all females, so three females. And we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be lucky if, or great, or destined, or, 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 or fate, if the last baby bison was born on Mother's Day, and it was a boy, and Guess what? Mother's Day happens, 11 a.m., and we were blessed with a baby bison boy. The fourth one, I was out checking bison that day, and uh, so we had three calves kind of running around, and we were waiting for this fourth cow to have her calf, and I noticed she was standing off by herself from the larger group, and uh, I thought, well, she might be getting ready to calf, but she started nudging in the deep grass. So I got a little closer and peered in there and he was already born, this bull calf. He was all wet, he'd only been 15, 20 minutes and she was cleaning him up. 
I think everybody's stunned at how fast these animals can get up. Within 20 minutes, they're standing. A little wobbly, yes, but they're standing. And he was suckling with a mother within about 40 minutes. So uh, it, it was just the idea that these animals are back. And orange calves, they're cute. And you know how they run around. It's the start of our magnificent herd, our herd of 50 ultimately. I think the historical significance is important. I know our First Nations, our elders, and the First Nations community in general was strongly, strongly supportive of this and the fact that these babies were, uh, were born here. It's a continuation, kind of everything at Wanuskewin is like that. There's story after story, layer after layer, and here's one more with these bison, especially these, these little baby bison. My name is Sai Standing, and uh, my Dakota name is uh, Wakayanaji. I'm from uh, Wakwetun Dakota Nation. And at the moment, my uh, role here in Wanaskewin is uh, an elder advisor. For us, I think the, the bison is very, a very important animal for the Ocheti Shakoi, the Dakota people. We were, according to our creation stories, we were came on the earth about the same time. I don't know who came first, the bison or the Dakota, but we were supposed to help each other to live in this country, and that's how, and that's how we lived for years. You know, the bison providing the food, shelter, economy, you know, and then that's the main reason why the bison is important, and it's the importance of a thing, bringing them back to want to skill, and that was all initially our objective way back when we started the park, because there's a bison jump here, and there's bison uh, pounds, and uh, we have to have bison here, live bison, because other places had live bison, except for us, but it was so expensive and costly that it took this long to bring them back. These baby bison, they signify the next generation. And so once these bison breed with the grasslands bison, we'll have bison that are reflective of the 1800s bison. And that is just, it's just, it blows my mind. It's, it's so significant for the Indigenous cultures all around the world to, to know that. It takes us back to a place where we once were and uh, reminds us of the resilience and the strength of the Indigenous cultures through the resilience and strength of the bison that are back with us today. I remember going back to uh, some of our meetings, our summit meetings, and the elders at that time were saying that when the bison were slaughtered, that our lives became down. And that one thing we have to do is bring back the bison because the bison eat the medicine and in turn we eat the medicine. And, and we were brothers, we were relatives, so we have to bring them back. And, and, and that's how I think every First Nation attempted to bring back the bison. That's what we did 26 years ago in Wapaita and we still have bison. So this is just another step towards bringing back the bison. The story here at Wanuskewin, yes, it's about bison, no question. But we also are interested in environmental stewardship and conservation. And so our ideas were early on, we're going to return what are now agricultural fields back to natural grass. This is not easy, it is expensive, but we wanted it to try to keep it as natural as possible. So it's definitely not a matter of bringing bison and running them out the back end of a trailer. We are interested in changing the quality of the soil so we will accept natural grass, but the story really starts then even with insects. So it's soil chemistry, it's insects. As it turns out, dung beetles that live in drivings from these animals are an important part of the ecology. Birds, as it turns out, have a lot to do with bison, particularly some birds, sometimes called cowbirds, they ride around on the top of bison, on the hump or on their head, and they're swooping up insects from underneath the bison. I'm happy to tell you that uh, two days ago, I was looking at our adults, and there were over 20 cowbirds all around, so they've come back that fast. This whole grasslands notion then is about trying to put things back the way they were. Our time capsule is no better than anybody else's, but we want to try to 
give an idea of what life was like, what were the grasslands like hundreds, thousands of years ago. And then of course overlaying on top of all of that is the story of our, of our First Nations. For me though, the, the future is that we have to educate our children because I think not, it's never taught in history books. So we have to do it through the Interpretive Center and hopefully tell the true story to the, to the world. The way I like to describe it, the bison almost became extinct. The grasslands are the most endangered biome in all of North America, even though it's the largest. They're fragile, grasslands are fragile. And if we don't keep care of them, we're gonna lose them. And then the history of our First Nations people being moved off the land and onto reservations and residential schools. If you look at all those three things, it's kind of a story of loss in a way, but Wanuskewin is about bringing that back in all three areas. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.